There are two other number of systems that are commonly used in computer science. Uh, base 8 is called octal, and the other one is base 16. Actually, the purposes of base 8 and base 16 is to make um, long strings of zeros and ones shorter. It's kind of a shortcut to representing them. And so let's, uh, let's talk about base 8, and I'll show you how that's, how that's done in, uh, in using base 8 to represent a, a longer uh, base 2 number. All right, so base 8 is, um, consists of the digits 0 through 7. So when we count in base 8, we count rather normally up until the number 7, and then 8 being the base of the system, uh, we now have to switch to a, a, uh, two decimal places, two places. So the next number is 1, 0. And uh, now it looks like 10, just like before, it looks like 10, but if you know you're working in base 8, I wouldn't call it 10. This is 1, 0. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 2. And it continues on until it gets up to 1, 7. And then the next number will be 2, 0. So 2, 0 is actually 16 because it's 2 times 8. And uh, so we count 2, 0, 2, 1, 2, 2. And eventually we get down to 75, 76, 77. And now we've uh, used up sevens in both places. Places. So now we jump to a third place. It becomes one zero zero. So what is one zero zero? Well, this is a ones place. This is the eights place. And this is the eight squared place. So actually, one zero zero in base eight is sixty four in in ordinary decimal numbers. All right. So I think you'll find the the techniques for converting um, an, a, a base 8 number over to decimals and vice versa. Rather similar to what it was with binary, but maybe a little more complicated in the fact that you'll probably have to use a calculator more. So anyway, let's, uh, let's play with some, some problems here to get you used to this. If you like the, uh, the chart method I've been, I've been showing you uh, in these videos, then um, this chart is going to be somewhat shorter because the numbers get large quickly. And so the first number of course is the, the ones place or the units place. It's literally 8 to the 0 power. So this is 8 to the 0. 8 to the first is 8. 8 to the second. 8 times 8 is 64. 8 to the third. 8 times 8 times 8 is 512. And uh, of course this would be the, the fourth position. I believe it would be 4096 if we have to go that high. So anyway, I thought I would do a few problems with um, that would turn into four digit numbers in base 8. And uh, for example, let's look at um, let's see 234 base 8. What would that be? Alright, well I have uh, 2 in this position here and so 2 times 64 will be 128. 3 times 8 is 24. And 4 times 1 is 4. So if we add these numbers together, I believe we get um, 128 plus 24 plus 4 is uh, what's that? Two, 156. So 234 base 8 will be 156. So it's based on going 2 times 64. Let me double check here. 2 times 64 plus 3 times 8 plus 4 is 156. So the base 10 representation, our ordinary 156, would be represented as 234 base 8 in the octal system. All right. So, let's try a couple more of these, and, and like before, let me encourage you to pause the tape, uh, or pause the video, and, uh, and see if you can figure this out yourself. So let's try this number, um, 503, base 8. Alright, so I've got 5 times, has 3 digits, 
503. So 5 times 64 is 320. I have a 0 here because we have a place value of 0 and then there's just 3 times 1. So this one's not bad at all. 503 base 8 will be 320 plus 0 plus 3. That's 323 in base 10. Okay, so let's do another. This will be a bit bigger. 3167 in octal, or 3167 base 8. Alright, so now I've got to multiply 3 times 512. Pull out your calculator if you need it. So, because this has four places, so 3 comes from this place. 3 times 512 is 1536. 1 times 64. 6 times 8 is 48 and 7. So 3167 base 8 is, uh, I'm going to make the 8 look more like a subscript. There we go. Would be 1536 plus 64 plus 48 plus 7. And I see that's equal to uh, 1655. 1655 in ordinary base 10. So, um, alrighty. Um, let's try one more of those. And, and again, you pause, pause the video, you try that, see if you can get the correct number. So here's the problem. 5634 base 8. 5634 base 8. So you try it. Again, it's, it's four places, so I only need this chart. 5 times 512 is 2560. I'm going to write it over here, 2560. 6 times 64, oh, what is that? Uh, 384, I believe. 384. 6 times 60 is 360 plus 24. That's 384. 3 times 8 is 24. And then 4. So add this up. Uh, let's see, 7, 15, 17, 6, 9. 2,972. I hope that's right. So 5, 6, 3, 4, base 8 is 2,972. Now I'm going to check that on my calculator. And uh, because once you get the hang of this, you can maybe it'll just be able to whip these out on a calculator. Now I do have to know the place values for, for base 8. And so 5 times 512, 5 times 512 plus 6 times 64 plus 3 times 8 plus 4 is 2,972. Okay, so there it is. 2,972. Um, Alright, let's, uh, let's try one, one big one. Okay, just, uh, just to see if we can do it. So, one large number in base 8 will convert to decimals. A little bit larger than what we've been doing. Alright, so here's our number. Here's our challenge. 473572 base 8. Convert it to base 10. I call it decimal. Decimal is base 10. Alright, so um, this position is the ones. This is the 8th position, 8 to the first power. That's 8 to the second, 8 to the third, 8 to the fourth, 8 to the fifth. So my number becomes 4 times 8 to the fifth I'll put that in parentheses, plus 7 times 8 to the 4th, plus 3 times 8 to the 3rd, plus 5 times 8 to the 2nd, plus 7 times 8, plus 2. 8 to the 1st is just 8, and then plus 2. So 4, 7, 3, 5, 7, 2. Um, I don't recall what 8 to the 5th is. It'd be the same as 2 to the 15th power, and I just I don't have that stored upstairs. So this is going to be 4 times 8 raised to the 5th power. And that is, uh, let's see, 131,072. 
And then 7 times 8 to the 4th, so 7 times 8 raised to the 4th power is 28,672. 3 times 8 to the 3rd, 3 times 8 to the 3rd is 1,536. 5 times 8 to the 2nd, so that's 5 times 64, is 320. And then um, 7 times 8 is 56, and then 2. So we have to add up those numbers together. And let's see, there's 10, 18, let's see, 18, 28, 35, 3, 9, 14, 17, 2, 10, 11, 4, 6, and 1. So it should be 161,758. So, because I don't want to have to uh, redo this, I'm just going to double check myself. And, uh, yep, 161,658. I made a mistake somewhere. 3, 9, 14, 17. Yep, what did I do? 8, 18, 25. This should have been a 2 there. So, well, I should use my calculator. <laughs> okay. I, I usually don't mess up like that, but... Once in a while it happens, so it's good to, to trust but verify. So this number is equal to 161,658. Okay, anyway. Um, you notice that um, even in base 8, this number will look larger than our base 10 number. Uh, at least in size, it, it looks larger. And uh, so, anyway. So that's, uh, that's converting from base 8 to decimal. Now let's go backwards and, and convert from decimal to base 8. And then I want to show you where this is used um, more commonly in uh, computer science. I made up a number, 145, and let's convert that to base 8 or octal. So I'm going to come up, uh, I'm going to use my little chart here method, where the, uh, the, the far hand right column our right hand column is 1, the units place. The next column will be the 8th place, 8 to the 1st. And then the next column will be 8 to the 2nd, or 8 squared. 8 times 8 is 64. If I needed a third column, it would be 8 to the 3rd power, 8 times 8 times 8, or 8 times 64 is 512. But 512 is larger than 145, so I won't be using that column. That means this is going to translate into a three-digit octal or base 8 number. All right, so this is a, this is a little more work than, than the binary problems that, that we were doing. The, uh, the first thing to do is say, well, okay, let's divide 64 into 145. How many times will 64 go into 145? So, um, you can do that on a calculator. You'll get two points. See, what do you get on a calculator? It's 2.265625 is what you get on a calculator. Well, it means that 64 goes into 145 two times, but now we need the remainder. So if I take 145 and subtract 2 times 64, uh, this, which is 128, I'll get a remainder of 17. So um, you could also show it as 145 minus 64, minus 64 again, gets you down to 17. So you know, division is a, is a repetitive subtraction. And uh, to do this by subtraction could, uh, could start to fill up a piece of paper on the right type of numbers. So um, we'll have to uh, figure out the most efficient way is probably uh, using a calculator with this. Uh, for the longer problems. All right, well, anyway, when we subtract 2 times 64 from 145, we get 17. And um, now, one way to get that 17, I'll, I'll show you a little secret. If you cut off the, the whole number and multiply what's left, so when you do that on a calculator, keep all the decimal places. So point two. Uh, I'm sorry. 145 divided by 64 hit equal. 
we have this number. I'm going to subtract off 2. Subtract off the whole number part. Now I've got this part, the decimal part, 0.265625. If I multiply back 64 times 0.265625, and all you have to do, since if you have this number, subtract 2, hit equal on your calculator, now just hit times 64 equals. In other words, you don't have to keep re-entering a lot of numbers. And you get 17. <laughs> so there's our remainder. I wanted to show you this part because on a long problem, this method may come in very handy. Anyway, um, we don't really need a calculator for the rest of this problem because 8 will go into 17 two times. 2 times 8 is 16 and there's a remainder of 1. And so 1 goes here. So for this problem, 145 will be equal to 221 base 8. There we go. So uh, let's do another one. So let's try this problem. 2037 converted to base 8. So if you think you know how to do this, give it a try. Pause the video and see if you can get it. Alright, now the, the next column over here would be 8 times 512, which is 4096. Well, 4096 is, of course, larger than 2037, so this is going to be a four digit number in base 8. So now I have to divide 2037 by 512, and I think it'll go almost four times, but not quite. I think it'll go three times. So 2037 divided by 512 is uh, 3.9785 and it's got some other decimals to it. All right, so it'll only go three times, three times. So here's my choice. If I subtract this three on the calculator using all your decimal places, subtract three, hit equal, multiply by 512, we get 501 as a remainder. If I took 3 times 512, which is uh, 1,536, and subtract, I get the same number, 501. So the remainder, after you divide 2037 by 512, the remainder is going to be 501. Okay. And um, so, um, you know, various ways to get that. Now that we have 501, how many times does 64 go into 501? So 501 divided by 64, it goes about seven times, almost eight, but seven times. And so uh, 501 divided by 64 is 7.8. 828125. So my choice is to, if you want to use this part on your calculator, with all those decimals in your calculator, subtract 7, hit equal, multiply by 64, and you'll get 53 as a remainder. Um, over here, if I did 7 times 64, I get 448, and if I subtract, I get 53, just like you would from here. All right, so we're down to 53, and then how many times does 8 go into 53? Uh, six times. Now this, I hope you don't need a calculator for this, but if you do, pull it out. 6 times 8 is 48, and when I subtract, I get a remainder of 5, so my last digit is 5. All right, so 2037 equals to 3765 base 8. Okay. There it is. So anyway, kind of a, kind of a large number for probably what you would, you would face in uh, computer science. But anyway, it's, it's good to, to know how to use all this, I think. Um, okay. So let's uh, let's try one more of these. I'll make it a little bit bigger, and then we'll uh, I'll show you some other things. Here we go. Here's your challenge. 
31,671. Convert that to base 8, an octal. So, pause this, see if you can get it. Now, I'm going to need more places, I believe, in base 8. And so, my next place will be 8 times 512. It's actually 8 to the 1, 2, 3, 4th power. So, now 8 times 512 is 4,096. And do I need one more place? Let's see, 8 times... 4,096 is 32,768. That would be 8 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 power. So if I went to yet another place value, it would be larger than this number. So I don't have to go to this column. I can stop at 4,096. All right, so let's divide 31,000. 671 divided by 4096. And it goes about seven times with the remainder. So 31,671 over 4096 is 7.73 something. Okay. All right. I think I'll just do it this way. I'm going to punch in, here, I'll write out these steps I punch in on my calculator. 31,671 minus 7 times um, 4,096. I use the computer symbol for multiplication, but you know, just hit the times button on your calculator. So 31,671 minus 7 times 4,096 equals 2,999. So I subtract um, <laughs> whatever that number is, I'm down to 2,999. I'll, I'll, I'll write it up here. 7 times 4096 is 28,672. Subtract, you get a remainder of 2,999. Almost 3,000. I could have also gotten this number probably by using all these decimal places. Subtract 7. <laughs> multiply the decimal part remainder by 4,096 and you should get 2,999. So uh, you can experiment on that, see which way you like, like the best. Um, okay, now how many times will 512 divide into 3,000? Know, it's about 3,000, isn't it? Well, I think it'll go almost six times, five times. So, by the way, I forgot to put my 7 here, okay. So now divide 512 into 2999. 2999 divided by 512. So 2999 divided by 512 is 5.857. And anyway, it's it runs five times. So I'm going to put a 5 there. Now I could punch in 2999 minus 5 times 512 and get the remainder after I divide. And so 2999 minus 5 times 512 is 439. Or you could say 5 times 512 is 2560. When I subtract, it's 439. All right. Either way. Um, one more time, you could, on this decimal part, subtract 5, multiply by 512. That will give you the remainder of 439. Okay, so we'll keep plugging away. I need to do some erasing here. But now we're going to take that remainder, 439, and divide it by 64. So how many times does 64 go into 439? So 439 divided by 64 is 6.859375. So 6 goes here. And 6 times 64 is 384. So 
you know, there's a number of ways to get the next remainder. You could take just 439 minus 384 and get 55, I believe. Or you could take 439 minus 6 times 64 and get 55. Or you could take this part, 0.859375 times 64 and get 55. So, a couple ways there to do that. How many times will 8 go into 55? Well, um, actually 6 times. Because 6 times 8 is 48. When I subtract, my remainder is 7. Now, if, um, if I don't get that right, <laughs> if I don't get one of these numbers correctly, then I'll end up with a remainder that's larger. For example, if I put a 5 here, by mistake, 5 times 8 is 40. If I want 55 minus 40, my remainder would be 15. Wait, I can still divide 15 by 8. So we have to get the, the largest number here that we can uh, get a possible remainder. Alright, my remainder is 7, and that's less than 8, so 7 goes there. So here we go, 31,671 equals to 75667 um, base 8. 75667 base 8. Okay, <laughs> so they're, uh, they're a bit more work, aren't they? Um, now let me go on to show you where this is commonly, I believe is more commonly used in computer science. So let's go back to base 2 momentarily. Here's, a, here's an 8-bit number, or 1 byte in information, 10110011. And um, we can cut, uh, carve it up into threes, okay? So the first three digits are here, 011. Next three digits, last three digits. And here's where octal comes in pretty handy. If you know the, um, if you know your base two numbers or your binary numbers, and so in decimals, zero is zero, one is one, two is one zero, three is one one, four is um, one zero zero, five is one zero one, six is one one zero, seven is one one one. Those are the first three digits in base 2. The highest you can go with three bits of information is 111. I actually have a mechanical computer that I got as a kid back in the 60s. And it has a three-bit output, so it can count up to seven. <laughs> anyway, if you ever see me on Central Campus and you want to see that little mechanical computer, come, feel free to come by and visit me. Uh, it's in my office. Alright, so um, it's kind of nice to have a cheat sheet here. One zero is two. One one zero is six. Zero one one is uh, well, zero one one is the same as one one. So that's three. So that number translates out to 263 base 8. And there it is. So it's a, it's a rather quick way to uh, shrink a binary number down is to turn it into octal, an octal code. Now, um, what's that equal to? Well, if we need to go further into base 10, then this is 2 times... 8 squared plus 6 times 8 plus 3, 2 times 64 plus 6 times 8 plus 3, 128 plus 48 plus 3 is 179, I believe. So it uh, looks like 179. So this is also just plain old 179. Let me double check that. So I've got 2 times 64 plus 6 times 8 plus 3 is 179. All right. 
So I think uh, one of the tricks here, one of the, one of the secrets to, to use an octal is to have these either on paper in front of you or in your head. If you do a lot of it, you'll, you'll just know these numbers. It's not a big deal. So let's try another one of these, uh, converting from binary to octal and then to uh, base 10 if we want to. Here is a 16-bit number, 16 bits. And uh, it's in base 2. So going to convert that to octal by starting here, looking at three places at a time. And I, I think I probably could have figured out a more creative number because I'm seeing 101, 101, 101. But anyway, uh, hopefully you get the idea here. So this digit is is a 1, because 1 is 1, 0, 1, 1 is 3, 0, 0, 1 is 1, 1, 0, 1 is 5, 5, 5. Base 8, so I'm going to write this a little shorter, 1, 3, 1, 5, 5, 5, base 8. So that's what it is in, in octal. Now, um, from there, it's still going to be a, kind of a big number because I have 8 to the 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this is 1 times 8 to the 5th power plus 3 times 8 to the 4th power plus 1 times 8 to the 3rd power plus 5 times 8 to the 2nd power plus 5 times 8 to the 1st power plus 5. And so now we convert it over to um, base 10, 8 raised to the 5th, so 8 exponent 5. Um, if you're not sure what that is on your calculator, on a graphing calculator, 8 to the 5th would be 8 caret 5. On uh, some calculators, it's 8 y to the x 5. And so uh, these are the common, common buttons used for raising numbers to exponent powers, in case you weren't aware of that. All right, so I have 1 times 8 to the 5th plus 3 times 8 to the 4th plus 8 to the 3rd plus 5 times 8 squared plus 5 times 8 plus 5. So if I punched it correctly, this should come out to be 45,933. So anyway. I, I happen to think that with a little practice, going from binary to octal to base 10 would be faster than trying to go from binary to, to base 10, okay, on, on long numbers like this. Anyway, but there's a representation of that, of that number. Now we can um, go backwards with this, and uh, oh, I probably should not erase this, my little cheat sheet here. But let me make up a, a number in base 8. So here's an octal number, um, 257013, base 8. And if I want to go to binary, binary, then 2 is, let me, let me put them up here. And, uh, Um, I'll tell you what, let me, uh, excuse me, I think it'd be good to have our chart up here again, I should not have erased it. So here's uh, decimal numbers, zero, and here's uh, the binary form. I think what I'm going to do is call zero, 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 zero. 1 is 0, 0, 1, 2 is 0, 1, 0, 3 is 0, 1, 1, 4 is uh, 1, 0, 0, 5 is 1, 0, 1, 6 is 1, 1, 0, 7 is 1, 1, 1. All right, so I, I've decided, let's let me put three digits down. So 2 is 0, 1, 0. But being on the far left, 
I'm going to erase the leading zero. So I'll just write two as one zero. Five is one zero one. Seven, one one one. Zero is zero zero zero. One is zero zero one. And three is zero one one. Base two. So um, you can go back and, and check this. I'm kind of mentally checking it, and I, it looks correct to me. So this number in base eight would be uh, one zero one zero one 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 zero 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 one zero one one base two. So pretty long number. How many how many bits is that? Let's see one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen. That's a seventeen bit number. <laughs> okay. So it would take seventeen on off switches to store that number in a computer register somewhere. All right, so anyway, that's, that's the idea that um, by cutting these into pieces of threes, you can easily go from an octal system to a binary system or vice versa. You can go backward and forward with that. All right, so that in itself, this is why you need to learn oct octal or base eight. And uh, the other system is base 16 where we go four places. So I've saved that for the last video.